Hey everybody, it's uh, Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich. Let's talk about the tropics because we've got some interesting things that are about to happen possibly in the Gulf of Mexico with our two systems approaching. Let's go right to the satellite here and we'll show you what's going on. Kind of a cool setup here. We've got this big storm system uh, basically over the Caribbean right there. And then we've got our storm system here. Uh, which is basically east of the Windward Islands, kind of out there in the middle of the Atlantic, not doing a whole lot right now. But both of those are tropical depressions currently. This one on the left is tropical depression uh, number 14. It actually probably is going to get a name before 13 because the hurricane hunters were out there today and didn't find a whole lot going on with 13. It might take a while to develop. So I actually think 14, um, as you look at it, looks a little bit better. And I'm going to show you as we zoom in first to 13, kind of a mess, um, kind of elongated. The hurricane hunters had a really tough time um, finding any kind of closed low-level circulation. And if they did find one, it appeared to be somewhere over here, um, away from all the rest of this activity. So it really wasn't in an ideal spot uh, for this to develop. But when you look at 14, the first thing you notice right off the bat, it's got a very good outflow. I mean, the outflow is going out of a huge envelope of, of clouds, but the low-level center is probably down in here or down in here. It's somewhere in there. Even the hurricane hunters found it shifting to the southwest a little bit. So even it wasn't in the exact spot that we thought. So let's look at the previous advisories because we will be getting a new one here in about an hour. Um, Tropical Depression 13 is expected to kind of move over southern Florida, central Florida, then into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Notice the time frame because this is all you heard about today, 2 p.m. on Tuesday. So keep that in mind, 2 p.m. on Tuesday. Let's go to number 14, and you can see there's our system moving west at 17. It's actually a slower moving system, so it's going to give time for 13 to catch up to it. It could interact with Nicaragua, the Yucatan Peninsula, Belize, and then into the Gulf of Mexico, and then head up towards the central or western Gulf. It's really important in these situations not to focus on where this icon is. It could be here, it could be here, and that's just the center of the storm. Remember, even if the center is there, impacts are well off to the east. So this is not a track of the impacts or the size, it's just impact of the center. So notice the time, 1 p.m. on Tuesday. So theoretically, we could have two systems in the Gulf of Mexico. So that naturally raises the question, when is the last time that has happened? It's only happened, I think, three times or two times, 50, 1953, 1933. And if we had simultaneous landfalls in the same day, I don't think it's only happened once, and that would be the 1933 event. So, But I'll tell you why I don't think that's exactly going to happen, because um, I think these things are going to be timed a little bit differently. I'm going to stop this right about here. I noticed some of the guidance coming in tonight is a little bit slower with Tropical Depression 13. Um, it's it's slowing down a little bit in the long range on the guidance, whereas 14 is up in here. So they may not enter the Gulf at the exact same time, and I think the timing's going to change quite a bit. Remember, we're looking at a seven-day forecast here, so the chances of this lining up perfectly seven days out probably slim and none. But there is a chance that we could have two systems in the Gulf. The question is, what happens when they get in there? Um, so we'll go through Wednesday. Um, the first thing people ask me today is, you know, I think they watch too many sci-fi movies and think, is this going to become kind of a superstorm? That's not the way it works with tropical systems. In fact, what happens to tropical systems is what happens here, something called the Fujiwara effect. This is an example of two uh, hurricanes in the eastern Pacific when they got close to each other, Irwin and Hillary. They got close to each other and they rotated around each other, but they also weakened tremendously. Um, they also moved over cool water, so that, that, that helped as well. But the Fujiwara effect basically means they pivot or orbit around each other. The problem with two systems getting into the Gulf of Mexico is that they typically would destroy each other. They just, the shear from one storm affects the other storm. It, it's not ideal for hurricanes. It doesn't make a bigger storm. Um, it's kind of like a car crash. You don't come out with a better car when two good cars come together. You end up with a mess. And that's kind of what's going to happen with these two if they get into the Gulf together. But I would caution, I do think there's a possibility this could go up here still. But the trend tonight, the guidance has been more into the Gulf. And the trend for this has been more towards the Central Gulf, which to me tells me the guidance is trying to pick up on that Fujiwara, them kind of maybe rotating around each other. 
I don't know if that's going to happen, but that's a distinct possibility. So let's look at the tracks together over the Gulf of Mexico, just to, just to look at it. So I put the water temperatures on here, and I plotted both tracks. And you can see that they would be similarly close together. They're also going to be passing over incredibly warm water here and here. So if they interact with each other, it might be actually a good thing because it would keep them from strengthening. But if one storm were to dominate and take over, that could be a problem because there's very warm water here and very warm water here. If either one of these storms can get their act together first, it has the potential to be a significant hurricane and likely deter the other one from doing much. But that's a lot of buts and a lot of ifs. So let's look at the steering currents. What's driving these things right now and what's to look for in the next couple of days? Well, first things first, we know we've got this big trough over the Gulf of Mexico, a crazy trough for this time of year right there. And we've also got this high right there. I don't know why I put a, a low there. This high is interesting. It's going to be building west over time. It kind of sits there, then starts building west. I don't know why it jumped back east there. Um, and I think that kind of blocks it from going north up the east coast and one way we'll know if this happens or not and for folks in the carolinas watching me if we start getting hot temperatures sunday and monday we know this ridge is building over us uh, if the rain chances start going down and it starts getting hot we know the ridge is building over us so that's going to be a sign to us and you can see by monday into tuesday they're both possibly one storm right there and the other one here but the weird thing is a lot of the global modeling is kind of killing this thing off and I, for, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's because of dry air or interaction with the islands. I think the models are confused on the interaction between the two. And what happens is one run of the models, it goes gangbusters with this. The next one, it goes gangbusters with this and cancels this one out. So I think it's having trouble resolving the energy of the two. And that's probably another reason why them getting into the Gulf could eventually pose um, some issues for them, be, for them being very strong storms. So I certainly think it's something to keep a very close eye on um, as we get into the weekend. But the good news, I guess, for right now, neither one of these are showing a huge sign of getting their act together real quickly. But the concern is because of the area of the Atlantic, the Caribbean, and the Gulf that they're moving into, both of these have the potential to be significant hurricanes. Of course, I'll be tracking them at 11 all day tomorrow. I'll continue to do vlogs on these as they get closer. But we could have uh, something interesting, two systems at the same time in the Gulf of Mexico, you just don't see that happen very often. Even if they're both weak, that is something memorable and just something else to add to 2020.